Hey, what's up, Pax Planers? Super excited to be back for you with another challenge called Login Bjorn. And we do have the task to log in with Bjorn's Gmail account without previously changing his password, applying SQL injection, or hacking his Google account. And this falls under the broken authentication category. So, quick thing I want to point out over here is we got to log in with Bjorn's Gmail account. So first things first is we got to find the actual Gmail account of Bjorn. And I do have another tab over here open, which is the hashtag administration path of OSP2 shop in which we see the registered users if we are logged in as the administrator. So this is just one way how to find out about all the registered users. I will actually link you in the top right corner how to get to that point as we had found this in a previous video of mine. Feel free to find out uh, about other ways and how to get it. Anyways, here it is. It says pure.kimenech at gmail.com. So let's take that for starters and copy that because we're going to need that later. I'm going to copy it right now and we'll just leave it for later. So. One thing that is also interesting is that this is a gmail.com address. And in a lot of cases, you can actually use your Gmail or your Twitter or whatsoever account to log in to other web services. And this is usually done via OAuth. And I'm having the OAuth Wikipedia page open over here just to give you a little idea what OAuth is. I don't want to go over all the details, but it's basically an open standard for access delegation. So that means if you, for example, have an account on Google or on Facebook or on Microsoft, you can click on login with Google, Facebook, Microsoft. You've seen this before. I'm pretty sure about that. And then you can just use the web application without actually having to register a new user. So that's pretty handy, but there's also a lot of things that can go wrong. And as we know that Bjorn Kimenech, so this is once again, this is his Gmail address, that he was using that Google account to log in to os 2 shop, we can see if we can find any flaw in the JavaScript that powers and runs os 2 shop. So let's go back over here and open up our developer tools. And the JavaScript that runs it, you can always find under the debugger tab. And the more interesting one is the main es215.js file. So let's double click that and that should open it up over here. And if you see a string similar to mine, which is super hard to read, you want to pretty print this first. So there is this little checkbox down below here that says pretty print. So let's click on that pretty print source that takes like a second. And then we have the code in another way over here, which is way easier to read. So as we were assuming that there is an issue with the OAuth login of OAuth Juice Shop, the thing we can search for is the string OAuth. And I will just do that right now and see if there's anything interesting to find. So over here we see OAuth unavailable, a couple of other OAuth strings, and actually, in the meantime, I want to point out what we're doing over here is reviewing the code. So that is a little different from all the previous challenges. We're actually not going to use burp, but make sure to get a good understanding of how to review code and what to look out for and how to best do it. For JavaScript that runs a dynamic web app, I am just using the built-in developer tools that we have coming with Firefox over here. And I will just skip through the code to see if there's anything interesting that pops into my eye. And I'll keep going and going. There's endpoints. There is a couple of strings. OAuth login. That seems to be interesting. What else? OAuth ng on init. And what I see over here is that it says password on that line. So that is interesting. We're having a line that deals with OAuth and it has a string password in it. And remember, 
we have to log in with Bjorn's Gmail account without doing anything like changing his password or applying SQL instruction. So this could be interesting. And if we look at that, it says use the service OAuth login, your parents access token, subscribe, let e this user service save, email. I'm just going over this and try to get an idea of what this is doing. Uh, we see over here that the email is coming out of the parameter T. Why this is just called T is because the entire code is minified. So in the original version of the code, this will probably say something different. But in order to make it harder to read and compress it a little bit, it is pretty standard that a minified version of the JavaScript that is powered on the web app is getting shipped. So we have to deal with that. This is called T over here. But let's assume this is a, a user object or something like that. So the email of that is stored in parameter email. The password is coming out of parameter E. And interestingly, we see that E is defined right over here. And it is defined by using the BTOA function. And then the email address is handed over to that function, which is getting split first, then reversed, and then joined again. So that seems to be pretty interesting. It seems to me that we have to find out what this is doing. And in order to do that, I'll just quickly run a Google search on what BTOA is. So let's say BTOA JavaScript. And we find this page over here that tells us that BTOA is a method that encodes a string in base64. Okay, so that's interesting. So apparently if I go back, the outcome is a base64 string and the input to that function is the email split reversed and join. So let's just use the developer tools console to play around with that. And the console tab is right over here. As I still have the email address stored, I'll just put it in here and actually put it in quotes. And then I will say, what if we split that? Because this is what the function is doing. So split by and no character. And we're getting an array. So we're seeing that we just split every single letter of the password and an array was created. Okay, so that's interesting. But how is this going on? Let's keep going on with reversing that because the next line was reverse. I'm reversing this and well now the letters are in the reversed order. So that's pretty cool as well. And now we're joining it again. And now we do have the entire email address in its reversed order. So let's quickly go back to the BTOA function. And if we look closely, it actually works like this to use DOM window dot BTOA and then hand in the string that you want to convert. So let's go back and use that string over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to my position one and say window BTOA and put that entire piece into the function. And we already see that we're getting a base 64 string out of this. So this seems to be an interesting string. I will copy that for now. And then I will just uh, quickly go back to my debugger. So now we're seeing that this string is assigned to E and that the password is E and the password repeat is also E. So apparently the string we just put out in the console tab is the password. So let's try if that works and if we can log in with Yearn's Gmail account. I will close this for now. I will go up over here, account, login, and I am having the password stored already. So I will paste that over here. And the email address was bjorn.kimenech at gmail.com. Perfect. 
So if everything worked out, we should be logged in as Bjorn right now as soon as I click on login. So let's give this a try. Awesome! You successfully solved the challenge login Bjorn, login with Bjorn's Gmail account. That was pretty cool. So we saw how we can use the JavaScript that runs the web app to extract juicy information. So make sure you always do that and see if there's anything more in it that you can use to hack the web app. With that, thank you as always for watching. Make sure to subscribe in the top right corner and I'll see you guys soon.